Good morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day on this terrific Tuesday morning. And it is a great morning. Hope you've had a chance to spend some time outside this morning because it's going to get hot later today. And don't forget to vote. It's election day today here in Dadeville. So go out and, and uh, make your voice heard. But today, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 as we look at a passage where Paul makes a really interesting uh, connection. We'll call it that. It's not a comparison. It's a connection. But listen to what he says. Now, he says, now, in verse 11, now, may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. Now, that's not the connection I'm talking about, even though what he wants is to make a new connection with, uh, or another connection with these Thessalonian believers. He wants with all of his heart to get back to them, to be able to share with them, to minister to them, and help them to grow in their faith, because that's what pastors do. But look at verse 12. It says, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you. Now, that's not the connection either, but I want you to think about this. Paul is, is talking about this great church, and he's already talked about how they, their love has gone out to all the world. Everybody in the known world knows about them and how they're ministering and, and, and the, the, their love for God. But he says, I'm, I'm praying that your love, agape love, this love with no bounds, this love with no, no uh, I'm going to love you but not you, but this, this great love that is sacrificial, that it would increase, get stronger, and abound to overflowing just as he has that love for them. And so that's a, that's a pretty good statement there. Paul's saying, I want you to love others as I have loved you. Now, listen, here's the connection. Verse 13, he says, I want you to do this so that he, God, may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. There's a connection there. Our love increasing and abounding for those around us helps us to establish our hearts or helps God to establish our hearts blameless in holiness before him. Now, we've lost sight of some very important terms in our modern day culture. Uh, blameless and holiness. <laughs> because we don't blame anybody for anything. It's not our fault. It's our parents' fault. It's the government's fault. It's the church's fault. It's the pastor's fault. It's our kids' fault. We, we blame everything on everybody else. What God wants to do is to establish our hearts to really be blameless. And that only happens when we know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But he's talking about this growth process that helps us to live a life of holiness. If you don't do anything wrong, you don't have to worry about being punished for doing something wrong. That's the picture here. God wants us to be established blameless and holy. Now, how does that happen? It's because of our love that increases, not only for the people around us, but also for God. See, the two great commandments, remember? Number one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And number two, love your neighbor as yourself. If we could do those two things, Jesus says, we will have fulfilled all the law and the prophets. We will have done everything that God has required of us to do. Now, here's the thing. God wants us to be grounded, established, and our lives founded on this idea of being blameless and holy, and that only comes as we learn to love bigger and better, and that's important for believers. Can I point one more thing out to us today as we look at this? At the very end of that verse, he says, now this is when it's going to happen, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Now, I want you to understand, Paul really believes that Jesus is going to return imminently, that he is going to return before Paul uh, leaves this world. He believes that as he's writing this letter to the Thessalonians. In fact, at the end of every chapter in this book, in this letter, he talks about the second coming of Christ, the rapture of the church. Interesting, isn't it? Because that was his heart. That was his belief. And he wanted these believers to get things right before Jesus returned. Can I tell you a secret? Jesus hasn't returned yet. 2,000 years and he still hasn't returned. You know what we need to be doing? 
We need to be getting our hearts right, established in blamelessness and holiness through our love for the Father and our love for each other. Think about that today, because I really believe Jesus is going to return soon, and it could be today. I hope it is. God bless. We'll see you on the other side.